Mario, I heard this week you say that this camp has been really unusual, and that's obvious because of the schedule. What's been the biggest difference for your team in camp, uh, given everything you've had to go through to get the season started? Well, probably the biggest difference is not having that unlimited uh, amount of time to prepare your team. You're, you're relegated to a 20-hour rule that you would during uh, the regular season when school does start. So your, your walkthrough time, your meeting time is cut down significantly. But, you know, guys found a way to, to get it done, make the adjustments, go forward and prepare properly. Uh, how much do you expect that to show itself in the early part of the season, particularly on Saturday night? Well, it doesn't have any time to show itself. I and mean, we've got to go out there and play our best football and at the same time make sure that as going in, we knew that it was going to be a, a truncated season. We knew that there were going to be challenges. And the worst thing we could do is give in to that and make excuses. The bottom line is we expect to play our best football on Saturday, and that will always be the expectation. Uh, you had, you've done such a great job recruiting. I know there's a, a deep talent pool at Oregon right now, but you have had several key opt-outs. Panay Sewell, your secondary has been hit pretty hard. How has that affected the, the potential and the development of this particular team? Well, football has a funny way of forcing guys in a, in a taking on significant roles, and this certainly is the case right here. Those are great football players. Those are Sunday football players that all – they all came back to play their senior year and their junior seasons. But with them now being gone, the guys that have stepped up in their place are guys that for the most part have seen significant action that understand the importance of the role that their guys played the year before. So they're ready. They're ready to take on this challenge. They're excited for the opportunity and they have worked hard. They have busted their tails to perform at a high level and we expect them to play well on Saturday. Uh, one guy that is back that was terrific last year in his first year was Kayvon Thibodeau. What will he do better as a second-year player against Stanford on Saturday night than we saw last year? I think the best part about him now is that now he's more of a complete player. You know, when he came in, he had to feel his way a little bit early on, and by midseason, he was playing some great football. Well, now he's a first, second, and third down player, a guy that we can move around, is very versatile, and uh, he allows us, he allows Coach Avalos a lot of flexibility with the defense, with different packages, and not solely in terms of third down and pass rushing situations, but also on first and second down. Uh, you also, obviously, Justin Herbert's gone, playing great in the NFL in his first year there. You've got a new offensive coordinator in, in Joe Moorhead. How will the, the offense look different, whether it's Tyler Shuck or Anthony Brown, the Boston College transfer quarterback with Joe running the show on offense? How will it look different from what we saw last year? Joe's done a great job of elevating the, the processes for the quarterbacks, elevating their standards. Uh, we've seen more explosive plays created in practice. Their personnel usage is a lot more multiple than we have been in years past. So we expect to take another significant step offensively uh, than where we were a year ago. Uh, Mario, this is a show about the college football playoff, even though we're three weeks away from the first rankings, and you mentioned the truncated season. How would you advise the college football playoff selection committee to evaluate Pac-12 teams? Well, I mean, to me, uh, the only advice I would give anybody is, is let people play. Let people go play out their seasons and put their best on tape and evaluate that, whether it be six games, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't think that part should, uh, should factor into the bottom line. The bottom line is who is playing the best and who deserves to be in there, regardless of conference, length of season, and all that stuff. Mario, we wish you luck, my friend. I'm, I'm really glad you guys are getting to play. I know you are, and we look forward to seeing your team play on Saturday night. Appreciate you. You have a good one. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.